So here we're looking at my research into artificial general intelligence and how it's used and applied in beta AI. Um, so to lay some, you know, very simple ground rules, uh, for what we do is we break down the world into, you know, kind of like a world state, so world models, which is all the information we have um, that our AI has at the given moment in time. Um, and we have, you know, current world state and a desired world state. And we have some kind of metric that says, are we at a desired point in time, uh, desired world state at any given point in time? And then we can apply that. And ideally, by convention, we say we want to maximize that metric um, to the point that we hit some desired level. And there could be multiple desired world states. Uh, for instance, desired world state in the game of checkers is winning. Um, a desired world state in a sales call is getting, you know, closing a deal. Um, so for the context of like, you know, in AI, the number of world states, if you iterate over all possible combinations of quantifiable information that they describe the world, it's practically infinite or is infinite. Um, and you can't just iterate over every possible, you know, change you want to make. And we want to eventually get to a desired world state, even if we don't know what it is. Uh, so what we can do is identify transformations. So a, a world state transformation is any change to any kind of piece of information that describes a world state that would change it into a new distinct, a distinguishable world state. Uh, now, sometimes these transformations uh, might be known or unknown because there can be hidden information that our agent or AI does not understand about the world. There can also be hidden information that we do know about that, but isn't physical. Uh, for instance, when you talk about, uh, say, sports, whose turn, is, whose turn it is um, to be playing, um, on the field, um, how many timeouts, stuff like that. Um, it's not, that information is physically not necessarily on the field at that point in time, but it's understood by both teams. Uh, so an, an action is something that an agent can do to apply a set of um, one or more transformations to get to a new world state. And as an, as an intelligent agent, you wanna get to a desired world state um, as efficiently and quickly as possible. Uh, whatever that world state may be. Uh, we might, again, we might not necessarily know what's desired, but we have, an, we have a way of measuring if a given world state is good. So uh, for instance, we, we start at, you know, say G sub A, we look at this one, it might not necessarily be desired, but we know we can jump to one that is. However, the number of actions that can be taken um, is very large, and the number of actions it can take to get to a given desired world state can also be very large. Um, depending on how atomically or how fine grained you define these actions. And the idea is like, we're, you know, betas, these actions are defined by the AI um, from the ground up from, you know, world state transitions. And then we apply constraints to, you know, narrow that down. And one way, you know, you can do that is saying, okay, identifying concepts of invariance and repetition. So repetition is, you know, applying multiple transformations at once. Um, and so that, you know, for the concept of repetition, you might say, you know, if you need to move, um, for instance, you're playing like Legend of Zelda character and you need to keep moving the character over one one to the right to move down the hallway, um, that's a repetitive action you're doing over and over. Move to the right, move to the right, move to the right. You can compress it down into saying move to the right X amount of times. Um, and then there's invariance, which means if you choose between a number of actions, it doesn't matter which, which one you choose, it's gonna get you to where you're trying to go. Um, for instance, uh, if you're talking about football, um, you say, you know, a player can, you know, a player on the right field can move straight. F um, he can move right to the one centimeter, then move straight right to the two centimeters and move straight. Uh, being off by a couple centimeters doesn't change whether or not um, he can catch the ball uh, to a degree. And you can, again, when you identify invariance, you're saying, okay, there's a set of um, different distinct world states that if we we achieve that, if we get to that world state, it doesn't affect our ability to finally get to a desired world state. And because these are distinct world states, you now have parameters that describe how they're distinct. And now you, what we're trying to do, you know, what we do at beta is say, okay, can we use this information from the point of view of an AI to collapse that and then parameterize and describe higher level actions? Uh, and if you have fewer actions to describe how to do, how to get to an end result, a desired world state, well, that means a lot less computation you need. And ideally you want to do this recursively. Uh, as well as, you know, when you, when you start collapsing these world states, you're collaps you're parameterizing, you're, you're picking up abstractions that you can use later on. Uh, and that is the end goal is effectively, can you say, can you describe our recursive action? So you have this initial problem on the left, which is like, okay, we need to get to this end world state. There's many ways to get there and it's very confusing. 
they might say, okay, well, what we've learned through, you know, machine learning through previous um, iterations is we can break this down into like, you know, a subset of actions. And we say, instead of getting the GB, let's just get the G prime. Can we define an algorithm that says, simplifies the problem says, okay, G prime is a sub, we have the sub objective. Um, and we can look at that because we can, you know, we can throw that into a, an algorithm that'll say, find G prime, um, say, you know, breadth first search or something. And then it'll tell us how to get there. And then once we're there, it's much easier to get the GB. And that is, you know, what we'd use in beta. So when I've been showing in my previous demo saying, oh, we have this language model and I tell it to how to play tic-tac-toe. Um, it's, that's how it's actually playing tic-tac-toe. It's generating this graph behind the scenes on the fly and then figuring out how to play it. I'm not programming in the algorithm that says how to play tic-tac-toe outside of how do you describe the constraints and the rules. And the reason why this is so important is saying, okay, well, as, a, as an AI goes out on the field, it's going to figure out situations that hasn't been before that its training data is not going to be applicable for. Um, it's either not, it doesn't have the prerequisite of training data or the prerequisite of training data just isn't dense enough to describe to train the, the AI. Um, and so the AI is going to have to you know figure out how to deal with that. And that means it's going to have to describe the problem and then break it down and try to solve it on its own. Um, and, you know, the kind of way we do that is, you know, we define, you know, pull of actions and and we have some code instead of algorithm that says, okay, this is, these are heuristics you can use to apply this. And then we can use further training to, you know, break this down. Uh, now how we do that, of course, is the source code is closed. Um, but a lot of what I'm presenting in my, these demos is saying, okay, this is now we're, we're, con we're procedurally, you know, building this out. And the demo is a, you know, demonstration of like the fact that we have accomplished that. So that's the state of beta as it is.